Madam President, as I stand here to advance this motion, I don't know where to begin. Where to begin to talk about the havoc that the Modi government has wrought to India? Should I start with the economy, which he has wrecked with his absolutely ridiculous, unthought out policies like demonetization? I could name many others. I was asked facts. Now, this is another unique thing that the Modi government has given us. It has destroyed all institutions whose job is to find out the facts. The National Sample Organization, which is supposed to come out with the figures of unemployment, that was prevented from putting out the figures for the last two years. When finally the figures which they had collected leaked out, which showed that far from creating jobs, he had actually destroyed more than one crore jobs in the last one year alone, that is more than 10 million jobs in the last one year alone, then the heads of the statistical organizations which were responsible for creating these figures, they were attacked by the government and they had to resign. So all institutions whose job is to find out the facts and put them out on the table are under attack. And then we are told to rely only on propaganda. As I said, I could start with the economy, but what he has done to Indian society, to, to our constitution, to our thought itself, is something far more insidious. Today we are told that there is no such thing as fact. We are told that there is no such thing as science. There is no such thing as reason. That everything depends upon the will of the people. If the people say that black is white, then black is indeed white. This is what we are being told. If the people say that uh, in ancient India, as Modi said, we had developed plastic surgery and Lord Ganesha's trunk was a fine art of plastic surgery in the past, or as he said, or as he said, that Kern from Mahabharat, from this ancient epic Mahabharat, was born as a test tube baby, he was an example of in vitro fertilization, or as he said, that clouds do not allow the radar to see the planes and therefore I asked the Air Force against their wishes to go and strike Balakot when the weather was unfavorable, etc. I mean, do we, do we just disregard reason, critical thinking? Do we just disregard facts merely because we have been told to believe certain facts or certain fiction because of the propaganda that has been spread. That's the other damage that he has done. That he has reduced the media by controlling large sections of the media through inducements, through threats, etc., to just instruments of propaganda, instruments of spreading hate against Muslims, against minorities, etc. So, <clears throat> there is an attack on reason, there is an attack on science, there is an attack on civilized values themselves, civilized discourse itself. For example, if you say anything against Mr. Modi, you are likely to be lynched by mobs on the streets. If you are a Muslim, you are going to be lynched on the mob, by mobs on the streets with the police just looking on. If you say something even on the social media against Mr. Modi, you are going to be lynched on the social media by being given threats of rape or if you are a woman, threats of rape, otherwise threats of being killed, etc. And this whole social media lynch mob, as I call it, is controlled by no other person than Mr. Modi himself. You only have to read a book called I Am a Troll written by one of India's finest journalists, Swati Chaturvedi, to find out 
that this whole social media lynch mob whose job is to spread fake news, false information, hate, and to abuse its opponents is controlled by Mr. Modi himself, who on a daily basis gives instructions who is to be attacked today, who is to be trolled today, etc. And it's an attack on all institutions of governance, all institutions of democracy. We have never had a situation where four senior judges of the Supreme Court addressed a press conference saying that this government has put democracy in danger by controlling the Chief Justice who is using his power as master of roster in order to decide critical cases, assign critical cases to particular favored benches, etc. The Election Commission, for the last 30 years, the Election Commission was thought to be independent. Today, for the first time after 30 years, we are seeing that the Election Commission is condoning gross violations of the Code of Conduct by the Prime Minister and the leader of the Bharti Janta Party. The Comptroller and Auditor General gave a report on this uh, Rafael aircraft deal, defense deal scam recently, which was predicted three months in advance by the government. Three months before this report was given, the government told the Supreme Court in a sealed cover, in a note given in a sealed cover, which was reproduced by the court in its judgment, that this <coughs> report had been given, that it had been placed in parliament, it had been put out in the public domain, and the pricing details had been removed. Later when it was, if everybody pointed out that there is no such report, then the government filed an application saying that no, we meant will be given, will be placed in parliament, will be put out in public domain. But how did they know that the report would redact the pricing details? It has never happened earlier in the last 70 years of the Comptroller and Auditor General auditing hundreds of defense deals. In not one defense deal has the pricing details been redacted. But the government knew in advance that the pricing details would be redacted by the Comptroller and Auditor General, showing that even the CAG has been made into a cage parrot. All anti-corruption institutions have been wrecked. The Lokpal was not appointed for the last five years. The CBI, when it's, the CBI director, when he wanted to investigate the Rafael deal, he was removed in an overnight coup at 2 a.m. A contingent of 400 policemen were sent to take over the office of the CBI. And the Rafael deal was not allowed to be investigated. The Anti-Corruption Act, the Prevention of Corruption Act, has been destroyed by saying that every corruption investigation would require the permission of the government. That means you have to take the permission of the thief to investigate a theft. <laughs> the, so, I say, in the name of democracy, in the name of the Constitution, in the name of science and reason, in the name of civilization itself, the Modi government must go.